talk to internal audit. I hope you've grabbed yourself a cup of tea and I hope you're going to join me for a chat about how we might support each other through the key challenges for internal audit as we move beyond the immediacy of the COVID-19 pandemic. Got myself a banana, I've got myself some water. So, I'm here for the long haul, however long that haul is. So those of you that don't know me, I'm Liz Sandwith. I'm the Chief Professional Practice Advisor of the Chartered Institute of Internal Auditors, UK and Ireland. The Chartered Institute of Internal Auditors, UK and Ireland, is the only professional body dedicated exclusively to training, supporting and representing internal auditors in the UK and Ireland. We have approximately 10,000 members in all sectors of the economy and in all parts of the UK and Ireland. Our members are part of a global network of 200,000 members in 170 countries, all working to the same international standards and code of ethics. So what are we going to talk about today? Well, today I want to look at persuading internal audit clients just got harder. I want us to talk about and think about the art of persuasion, question whether it's given way to confrontation, and if so, how does this impact on internal auditors, whose role is to effect positive change through open conversation without fear of hostility. So thank you for joining me as we put these questions to the test and explore communication with stakeholders in the current climate. So, there's going to be a prize giveaway. We haven't had one for a little while and today it's a best persuasion scenario giveaway prize. So, I'd like to run this little competition. I want to question or ask whether you fancy yourself as a persuasive internal auditor. Tell me of a time when you've had to be persuasive in your role and it's paid off. Share your answers in the comments section. The winning story will be gifted with a guest appearance on a future Talk to Internal Audit live stream of their choosing. That's right. We're inviting you live on air to converse about a topic to our follower base. What better way to show your skills of persuasion? So hopefully you'll have a bit of fun, enter the competition, and then look forward to seeing you on a future Facebook. Remember, if you like Facebook streams and want to spread the word, and I'm absolutely certain you do, be sure to share today's live stream. I need to put my teeth in. You can do that by clicking the share button in the corner of your screen. After all, the more the merrier. So, let's start. One of my teachers at school used to say, if you shout loud, someone will hear you. But whilst in theory this is correct, in their class it used to work quite the opposite, in that they would deliberately not respond to the student who was shouting, but instead give attention to the student with their hands up who had something worth hearing, had something to say worth hearing. But as internal auditors know well, to effect positive change in our organisations, we must make those on the receiving end of our recommendations and our reports open, comfortable and amenable to what we have to say. Put another way, to be agents of change, internal auditors must embrace the art of persuasion. So are we as internal auditors able to communicate to the world what we have to offer? Persuasion is the ability to influence. Persuasion is the most important skill you can develop as an internal audit auditor. Why? Because without it, your ideas won't get traction. 
without influence, you won't be able to get the resources you need to deliver your internal audit plan or support um, the thinking you have in terms of your profile across the business. Without the ability to influence, you won't be able to communicate your unique value to the organisation. You won't be that trusted advisor that we strive so hard to achieve across all our organisations. On the flip side, with strong influencing skills, you can achieve amazing results with nothing more than the clothes on your back or the list of findings you have discovered in the audit. In a world full of persuaders, we can be one, a persuader, or we could be someone who gets persuaded. So for example, let's imagine we're in a closing meeting. We've come prepared to discuss our findings and seek engagement from the client as to the actions needed to address the weaknesses we've identified. But if we aren't fully prepared, perhaps haven't fully thought through the implications of the actions we are seeking management to implement, if they come back with responses that in effect say, no, or no, but we're going to accept the risk, we're just not going to do anything in terms of the actions you've uh, recommended, we might have just lost the moment and find that we've been persuaded to a course of action that we didn't intend or didn't want in terms of facilitating change. We've lost the opportunity to encourage, to lead improvements that impact for the good on our organisation and perhaps even on our customers and suppliers. One might therefore say that people in power are the persuaders and people without power simply act on the images and commands that are directed their way. Power is the ability to communicate and the ability to persuade. It isn't being the chief audit exec or the senior internal auditor. It's about the ability to communicate. Persuasion may be the ultimate skill for creating change. You can have an idea or a product that can change the world or perhaps the internal audit profession or even your internal audit team. But without the power to persuade, you have nothing. Communicating what you have to offer is the most important skill you can develop. So let's think about this idea and how we might persuade our organisations through communicating to change. I'm aware of an internal audit function during the early days of the pandemic who were to be furloughed, redeployed. The CAE sought to convince senior management and the audit committee that in such difficult, challenging times, they really had something important to offer. Stressing the importance of internal audit wasn't enough. The organisation was struggling financially. So, what did the CAE do? He tasked his team to think outside the box, to look across the organisation and identify opportunities for financial savings. The team identified that customers in one particular country were very slow payers. Always slow payers, even before the pandemic. So Internal Audit analysed the payment delay and compared that customer in that country to customers in other countries and proposed, based on the results of their analysis, that the organisation should increase its sales to country C and stop selling altogether to country A. They had evidence, fact, and a strong story to sell. They persuaded the organisation the value of internal audit and avoided furloughing, which meant they were able to continually support the organisation with the implementation of new processes as a result of government initiatives. They were able to provide real-time assurance 
and supported the organisation as it moved to the new normal. In fact, the CAE had to really struggle and fight with first line and second line to get their in his internal auditors back because they had been so well received. So if you're just joining us, welcome to our live stream, Talk to Internal Audit. As I've mentioned, today's theme is persuading internal audit clients just got harder. Has the art of persuasion given way to confrontation? And if so, how does that impact on internal auditors whose role is to effect positive change through open conversation without fear of hostility? Thank you for joining us as we put these questions to the test and explore communication with stakeholders in the current climate. Also, perhaps look forward a bit as well. While being effective uh, the, in the art of persuasion, it can often be viewed as just one step away from crossing over into manipulation. The, the ability to be persuasive in and of itself is not a bad thing, not in the slightest. It can be used by your parent when you were a child and you as a parent, I'm sure, use it with your children to get you to do something you would not normally want to do, such as cleaning your room. Never a problem for me. I am perhaps slightly cleaning obsessive. Well, my husband and my son think I am. Or eating vegetables. In my case, I had a thing about butter beans and my mum used to put them on my plate and then bring them out again, cold, to eat. The culture was, you eat these. And they were brought out until I ate them. Or to help get the most out of your employees at work. So at this juncture, as I mentioned earlier, I would like to invite anybody watching to feedback in the comments section of the stream examples of how you personally have been persuaded to do something you wouldn't normally have wanted to do in the working environment. For example, attend the audit committee and take the minutes. Present the outcomes of an audit to the senior management team. Form part of an onboarding team for the new chief audit exec, or even the new CEO. Alternatively, you can respond to our poll, which should appear on your screen now. So the polling question I'm asking today is, do you think the art of persuasion in terms of internal audit clients just got harder? Yes? No, not sure. So look forward to um, seeing your responses to this. Personally, what do I think? I think it probably just got a bit harder because of issues around uh, revenue, loss of revenue, issues around costs. Um, I think I'm thinking that potentially has got a little bit more challenging. So I'm going to give you a little bit of time to think about that. And then um, let's see what the results have to say. Persuading people is important because you're allowing your view of the world to be transferred to someone else. It's the expansion of the mind done using different senses to ensure that your point will be getting across. This is used for two different reasons. To either convince someone they should see something differently or to convince them to implement an action that could ultimately improve internal control, risk management or governance within your organisation. Persuasion doesn't require flashy elegant, uh, eloquence or a dramatic presentation. It's actually fairly simple. Phrase your recommendations in ways that incentivize listeners to embrace them. Because Doing so will make them more successful. But it's also not just a matter of phrasing. There must be sincerity and authenticity behind your words. You must truly want to help 
and be sincerely interested in making the audited area or enterprise better. So let's have a look at some of the, res uh, the results of our question. One good approach is to position your message in terms of risk. For example, if an audit reveals an outdated policy on how um, the organisation undertakes contractor due diligence, and you also identify that there isn't a right of audit clause in the contract, then a good starting point would be to communicate the risks that could arise if the policy isn't updated, to reflect the gaps identified and also keep up to date to reflect changes in the relationships in these challenging times, relationships with our customers, with our suppliers. A focus on potential risk eliminates finger wagging and instead directs attention collaboratively to how we might mitigate the risk and make the area um, more effective and efficient. That in turn can elevate shareholder value or stakeholder value. If you're just joining us, absolutely delighted to have you with us. Welcome to our live stream, Talk to Internal Audit. Today's theme is persuading internal audit clients just got har harder. And I'm asking and thinking and challenging whether the art of persuasion has given way to confrontation. And if so, how does that impact on internal auditors whose role is to effect positive change through open conversation without fear of his or hostility? So thank you for joining me as we put these questions to the test and explore communication with stakeholders in the current climate. The art of persuasion is different and the same whether you're working from home and persuading over Zoom or your video conferencing tool of choice or working face to face. It's different today in the remote world because you're not physically there. But it's the same because persuasion is about words, your body language and your attention. So given that this is our new normal for a while, here are six things that you need to keep in mind as you continue to work and drive uh, towards professional success from a remote environment. Listen. What matters to everyone is that you listen. And as internal auditors, we need to listen. Remember, listening is different from hearing. Hearing is involuntary. Listen, listening is active and requires conscious thought and reflection. When there's a pause, recap what you've heard. Take notes while you're on the call. But listening is something you do. Mirror. Match your body language to theirs. It creates both comfortable comfortability and rap rapport. So don't be obvious. Subtlety is key. Look into the camera, not at the screen. That's really quite difficult, as you'll have seen observing me. Talking to a little dot on the lid of your laptop or a camera on top of your monitor is way more difficult than talking to the screen. But remember, talking to the camera creates eye contact. Am I doing that? Match. Much like mirroring your body language, you should match your verbal communication as well. The volume and pitch of your voice should subtly match the volume and pitch of theirs. If they're fast talkers, speed it up. If they speak softly, quieten your voice. Things to remember. Focus, focus, focus. Don't be rifling for information. 
multitasking and ending up not hearing the make or break question or insight from your client. Be prepared, stay focused and act as if the person on the other side really is just inches away. To be persuasive, you must engage and be engaged. Avoid distractions or distracting others. It happens without fail. In my world, it's a cow starts mooing in the field outside my window, or a dog lets out a distant but noticeable bark. What's even worse, and again, we've all experienced it, is that meeting participants will start multitasking. That usually means you're boring them and you've lost them. Note the lighting on their face as they scan their email or do other tasks on their computer or start looking at their emails on their phone. The advice here, pay attention to others if you want them to pay attention to you. Do whatever it takes to decrease background noise and create a connection between you and the screen that will help you hold your audience's attention and respect for what they have to say. So this afternoon, before I started, there were a couple of cows mooing because their babies are in a shed and they've been in the field all day. So I had to go ask my husband to go and let them in so that they could see their calves, their babies and feed them. And then there was quiet. Otherwise, you probably wouldn't have been able to hear me for the mooing of cows. Use headphones if you can. Use headphones of some kind. Why? It decreases background noise and creates a connection between you and me and the screen. And that will help hold your audience's attention. Today's working environment is different than it was just a few months ago, but the common sense rules of persuasion still apply. Successful techniques for effective persuasion are well known and have been taught for centuries. They impart a bit of salesmanship, some evangelism or passion, and even a little bit of arm twisting. But effective communication is more than just bringing out your inner used car salesman. Indeed, it requires a disciplined and intellectually honest approach to your work. Even through remote, remote connections, the basis of persuasion applies. It's vital that you do your homework and learn about the decision maker. Just because you aren't meeting face to face, doesn't mean you can skip the groundwork you would regularly complete. What are you seeking to achieve? Are you able to compromise with regard to certain recommendations? Do they have any special interests that you could use as an icebreaker? So if I think back um, to one of my previous roles as a head of internal audit, I had an IT director who was an avid Eddie Stobart. I was going to say fan, but probably fan is the wrong word. There used to be a, a page on, on the website where people would record the Eddie Stobart lorry they had seen and where and at what time they had seen it. Because all Eddie Stobart lorries used to, I don't know, maybe they still do, have the name of a girl on their front, on the front of the lorry, on the, on the radiator grill. And, um, you know, the, the, the inclination when he was telling me about this was to think, oh dear, I wonder if perhaps he needs a life. Um, but I listened as a good internal auditor and listened and heard what he had to say. And interestingly, that night on, on my drive home, I saw an Eddie Stobart lorry, Victoria. So when I got home, I emailed him and said, I saw Victoria on the M1 this evening at 20 past six. I had a friend for life. The IT director would always find time for internal audit, always share with me 
um, new system upgrades or particular control issues that he had identified. And we built a really strong working relationship that stood us both in good stead. So what have you got? What do you know about your decision makers that put you in a position of strength in terms of that relationship that gets you the inside knowledge about what's going on in your organization. You will need to establish an even stronger bond to persuade via remote means. So flex your research talents and learn about your client. What do they do? What are their hobbies? What do we know about them? You should also continue to find their needs and pain points. Learning this information will help you demonstrate to your decision maker that you understand their goals, even if you can't see them in person. Establishing a strong sense of understanding will help you build trust and allow you to position yourself as a trusted advisor. This trust will be critical for remote persuasion. We've explored the impact of working remotely for several months, how and why internal audit teams have been rethinking how they approach workplaces and work processes in the period ahead. Embracing recent lessons learned from the virtual workplace to build more flexibility and adaptability into audit operational operations going forward. COVID-19 will continue to cause irreversible changes in many areas of society, including some that are yet unforeseen. While there are extraordinary challenges, there are also unprecedented opportunities for internal audit to support the organisation and its clients, redefine ways of working and enhance the influence and impact of internal audit with innovative methodologies and tools. Just because we can't meet in person with your internal audit client doesn't mean you still can't do your job. Learning to effectively persuade via remote connection is possible and by following the basic principles of persuasion, levering, leveraging your technology suite, setting time to practice and developing ways to be memorable, you still have a strong chance at leading your internal audit client to the desired outcome. While remote persuasion may take a bit more effort and preparation, you can get the results you seek if you take the time and keep these guidelines in mind. Are you, are we as a profession ready for the next decade? And are we carrying forward what we have learned over the last six months? So using remote tools to help us persuade is going to stand us in extremely good position as we come out of the remote working and perhaps go more into hybrid. So you might be doing face to face and you might be doing remote. Developing those skills is really important moving forward. So for those of you who are just turning in now, today we spoke about persuading internal audit clients just got harder. Has the art of persuasion given way to confrontation? If so, how does that impact on internal auditors whose role is to effect positive change through open conversation without fear or hostility? Thank you for joining us as we put these questions to the test and explore communication with stakeholders in the current climate. So a final thought, be memorable. Would you do a face-to-face -face meeting and not follow up? Absolutely not. You would always follow up with your internal audit client and you need to continue that with a remote connection. Think about ways you can stand out in the crowd. How about an old school handwritten thank you note sent to his or her home if you know their address. Remember GDPR though, 
so don't go hunting through your um in your hr database to find their address but if you happen to know it then how about an old-fashioned handwritten note during a time when personal connection is minimized it might be an opportunity to brighten your client's day and build trust just make sure you send it to the correct address if they're also working from home a note to the office will get lost in the shuffle but we could send an email couldn't we thank you we had a um, local authority internal audit forum yesterday and we had three really great speakers talking about uh, the expectations of internal audit from our key stakeholders moving forward. After the, the session, I took time to send a thank you. Thank you for giving up your time this afternoon to share your thoughts with the attendees at the forum. Doesn't take much time, but thank you is very important because now I'll be able to think about asking them again. So remember the live stream is available afterwards for those of your friends, colleagues who may have missed the live version on the Institute's Facebook channel. Please follow all the exciting things the Institute is doing on Facebook, LinkedIn and Twitter. As a member, you have access to the latest edition of Audit and Risk magazine, which is on, uh, available on our website and will be issued next week on the 2nd of September. In this edition of the magazine, we're focusing on several key topics, one of which will be diversity and inclusion. For those interested in developing their persuasion and collaboration skills, we have a brilliant virtual training course covering this and more called Resilience, Bouncing, Bouncing Back from Adversity. And details of this can be find, found in the comments section of the live stream. As always, you know I'm happy to take questions via email at liz.sandwith at iia.org.uk. And I will respond to any comments that you have put on the comments section of this um, session. Next week, 3rd of September, I will be exploring competing crises. Are you prepared? Crises are competing for the attention of internal audit. Whether we are being asked for it, whether or not we're being asked for it, governance leaders need the independent objective assurance of internal audit. Now, more than ever before, are you multitasking? Are you up for the challenge? So think about recession, COVID, climate change as well as organisations struggling with redundancies, struggling with loss of revenue, struggling with the need to uh, implement cost savings, then there is a real opportunity here for internal audit to help our organisations in terms of future sustainability. Are they going to be here for the long haul? I hope so. As we move into the future, please don't forget to book your slot in the diary, 4pm every Thursday. Don't forget, tea, coffee, water. Please remember, talk to Internal Audit, because the Institute is listening. Thank you, stay safe, and I hope you have had, you've enjoyed this afternoon. Thank you ever so much for joining me.